White power! White power! White power! White power! White power! White power! They're one of the world's most controversial organisations. Now, 60 years since the birth of the African American Civil Rights Movement, the Ku Klux Klan are on a recruitment drive for new members, including children. With special access to a recruitment rally at a secret location, we go inside the movement to meet the members and uncover how they're planning to take up military-style training for what they claim is the first time in their history. We're going to try to move into another direction with the Lowell White Knights and that is starting to arm train, hand-to-hand -hand combat and stuff like that just for the upcoming battle. Established 150 years ago, the Ku Klux Klan have long been associated with racism, cross-lighting and even murder. Today the Klan is made up of an estimated 6,500 members across the USA and they're travelling across America in a bid to attract new recruits. On the evening before their latest rally, we join them in the state of West Virginia on a night ride. Night ride is an old Klan term. When the Klan went out on a night ride, they went out and patrolled the streets and uh, sort of vigilante style. Today, night rides consist of dropping leaflets in the local area. Distributing these flyers for recruitment purposes. Uh, we put them in these bags, we add some rice for weight, toss them out the window into someone's driveway. Parents like Sam and Amanda have brought their young boys, 14-year-old Mike and 11-year-old Dustin, to West Virginia for the recruitment drive. I'm doing things like today because I'm being around people and not discussing people. <laughs> <laughs> not your <so> dad. <laughs> we spoke to criminologist and civil rights lawyer, Professor Brian Levin, who believes the targeting of children is consistent with the Klan's recruitment drive. The Klan is aiming for a younger demographic for a couple of reasons. First, to keep the organization alive. The, the Klan has traditionally been aimed at an older audience. In addition, though, youth provides it with a more relevant social and political base, as well as some technological know-how as well, so that they can access the Internet. And the Klan are now appealing to children online. Mum Amanda believes racial minorities could have a bad influence on her sons. The kids in school, you know, the black minorities, the Mexicans, I think they're taking their parents' drugs and bringing it to school and trying to make money off of it because their parents are so worried about um, doing drugs than providing for their own children. That's what I think. Members of the clan since birth, the boys have become regulars to such events and have even taken part in cross-burning rituals. I do remember like my first cross. How did it feel? Feel good. And Amanda wants the boys to have an active role in the clan in the future. I, I want them to focus on working on the clan and raising more kids, white kids, and show them the values of the clan. The next morning, heavily armed security teams man the gates as clan members arrive. What, what is it? It's a Remington. R1 1911 45 caliber. They claim members are from a number of professions. We got um, police officers in the Klan. We got lawyers. We got doctors. Your next door neighbor could be in the Klan. You'll never know it. The rally brings different factions of the Klan together, including the Lotties, which stands for Ladies of the Invisible Empire, who hold a bake sale. We go all over the United States to help families in need. Of, sh of shelter, food, and especially the children, because they cannot take care of themselves. Right? Exactly, and the elderly, especially. Yes. Yeah. Especially the elderly. Yeah. The rally gives members the opportunity to socialize and even exchange gifts. Well, what better to give my my imperial family than a uh, than a knife right? But I think I'll paint it black because it's funny. And uh, it is funny. Why has it got a noose on it? Well, because I had strings sitting at the house. As the rally gets underway, Clan Dragons deliver speeches on their views on race, sexuality, and even the media. You see, this state is a majority white state, a civilized Christian state. Unlike California, where they let the zoo animals walk free. Anybody who does not believe me, look at Michigan. The whole state's bankrupt. It's a majority black state. 
with three murders happening every day. Just goes to show you what happens when you take the nigger out of the jungle, but you can't take the jungle out of the nigger. If I were to push the envelope just a little bit more, and I said that I hate fags because homosexuality is forbidden by God's law. Praise God for AIDS. And these Jewish puppets who want to sell our ideals just for ratings on some TV show, they will be the first ones to hang for their sins in the end. Their sins against God and y'all sins against humanity. With the crowd warmed up, one of the clan seniors tells the group how they plan to move in a new direction. We're going to do something a little different for the next, probably the next couple of years to try to get our men and women ready for the upcoming battle that we're about to take upon us. And this is something that no clan's ever done. We're going to start it. All our boys are finally coming back home from the military, which is good. And we're getting a lot more military members joining as we're going to start doing military training. Now that we got our Marines and the Army back, they're going to start showing us how to skin and how to survive off the land. We're going to try to move into another direction with the Lowell White Knights, and that is starting to arm train, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and stuff like that just for the upcoming battle. Whilst the Klan claim their plan to militarize represents a new approach, Professor Levin argues such tactics have been seen before. This is something we've seen throughout recent decades where the Klan has gone through cycles where they've armed themselves, gotten in trouble, then mellowed out and then armed themselves again. Uh, they're looking at a philosophy of a race war and arming themselves is one way to telegraph to both their members and society at large that they are relevant. The latest rally only attracted 40 people and organizers know they require more numbers to have an influence. The ultimate goal for myself is to have our membership get to the point where we can affect political change through the, uh, we can affect change through the political system. Right now our numbers aren't quite good enough. But with such small numbers, can the Ku Klux Klan really have an effect in modern America? I think the real danger does not lie with the Klan being some kind of widespread army that has tentacles across the United States. That's not going to happen. But what we do have to worry about are individuals, autonomous cells, or duos committing terrorist acts on their own because they get training, they get inspiration, and they get know-how from being in the orbit of these hate groups. So do I think that the Klan as a holistic entity represents a significant widespread threat to the United States? No. However, loose radicals coming out of that orbit do in fact represent a threat of continuing terrorism here in the United States. Despite being low in support, the Klan leaders are confident they can change the political landscape. Black people, white people, we're all getting tired of the government and pretty soon you're going to see the government collapse. And when the government keeps on sending their money over to Israel and it finally collapses, you can see the Klan take it back and we're going to make this nation the way it needs to be. I want to thank all of you. God bless you all and God bless the Klan. White power! White power! White power! White power! White power! White power!